Hi friends, you're watching Faint Signals from Vega and my name is Trish Roberts. Um, I just wanted to briefly ch talk about a recent um, event which is um, a regular event now in the United States anyway and that is um, mass shootings and I wanted to talk about this, the elephant in the room which is uh, well firstly I wanted to talk about the Second Amendment and what that actually was intended to be when it was created and then uh, an, another point I wanted to make was um, the, the elephant in the room which is um, gender stereotypes and how they contribute to the um, patriarchal violence today and I'll make a few other points um, it's not going to be long and uh, so I hope that you'll uh, stick with me and um, it's another lovely day in Tasmania uh, a bit windy of course but that's what happens when you live on an island off the coast of, Tas uh, of Australia anyway so um, recently I was going to interview Ajama Baraka who is um, a black liberation activist and he was also he's he's a really amazing person and he um, I was going to uh, it didn't can't come through but it will hopefully in the future you might have seen me advertising that I was going to uh, talk to him on the 16th uh, but um, of February but it didn't uh, we had some tech problems unfortunately again so hopefully third time lucky but anyway um, when I was uh, just preparing for that uh, conversation um, I just came across a couple of quotes and and I wanted to share one with you um, which is about um, the Second Amendment it, this is by Professor Horn which um, He's a, uh, an academic in Texas, a black acad academic. And um, so um, he said, the Second Amendment was mostly created to protect the institution of slavery and to kill native indigenous people and take indigenous land. Professor Horn said, quote, the, quote, well-regulated militia, end quote, to which the Second Amendment to the US Constitution refers was a creation of colonial North America, end quote. He goes on to say, quote, historically then, the principal activities of the founding fathers, quote, well-regulated militia, end quote, were killing of indigenous peoples, land stealing, slave patrolling, and the enforcement of domestic apartheid. All of these, as the constitutional language declares, quote, being necessary to the security of a free state, end quote. A free state whose fundamental building blocks were the genocide of Native Americans and the enslavement of Africans, end quote. And um, <clears throat> so that's interesting because a lot, I don't know if a lot of U.S. citizens know that about the Second Amendment. They often think that, that the Second Amendment was created um, so that... Um, the public could, um, if the government was getting out of hand, the public could um, rise up with uh, with their weapons and um, and challenge the government or take it over or whatever. Well, that might be some interpretations, but it's def um, this particular black academic, Professor Gerald Horn, he uh, looked into this, and uh, you know that's really what it was all about. Um, keeping down uprising slaves and killing them and killing indigenous people and taking their land. So the, the Constitution and this um, Second Amendment, which everybody always uh, falls back on when there's a mass shooting, oh, we, we need our guns because it's in the Second Amendment, and also that other one, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Um, just quickly... <laughs> If you have an, uh, if there's an angry person and um, they don't have a gun, access to a gun, uh, the worst they could pos probably do is, um, you know, grab a knife and try and stab people, and you're going to kill a lot less people, you know, with knives than you are with uh, automatic weapons. And why on earth anybody needs automatic weapons is beyond me. I don't even know. It's amazing to me how, um, you know, you get without fail. <laughs> I, um, I was uh, just talking on social media um, in a thread of course 
because there's always numerous threads on days after mass shootings, like the one in Florida um, at the school. And uh, you, you probably, uh, unless you've been out of the loop, 17, I think 17 people were killed, mostly children. And um, anyway, and there was a number of people injured. So, um, but anyway, on this particular social media um, thread, I said to, I said, I'm, and I make this point, that in Australia, the last mass shooting we had was here in Tasmania. It was at Port Arthur, which ironically is a penal, an old penal colony where, you know, there was lots and lots of uh, tortured souls there in this penal colony. But they also have, it's like a tourist site in Port Arthur, um, down on the peninsula. Um, I think it's the peninsula. Anyway, geographically, it's, it's sort of a, a port and they, people go there to, um, to see the penal colony and to have... Uh, coffee and that and the like, you know, and, and sort of eat. It's it's just a sort of a basic bus tourist stop. So anyway, um, that's where this mass shooting was in 1996, and uh, there was 35 people killed by, and I won't mention his name, he's still in prison, but he was young, he was a white male, bl blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, typical that it's pretty much always white, young white men who do this. Uh, and um, he he um, he killed 35 people, including children. Uh, so, you know, really young children. Anyway, um, and then when that happened, uh, the prime minister at the time, pro excuse me, probably the only good thing that he's ever done was um, he decided to have an amnesty on guns, and uh, people handed in their guns, and if they didn't, of course. If they were found out to have these, um, uh, you know, illegal, or unregistered guns or whatever, they get a, a big fine or go to prison. Anyway, so lots of people cooperated and they handed in their weapons. There was a lot of them, probably not not near as much as you'd get in the United States, but um, you know, there was a lot of them. And um, and we haven't had a mass shooting since. And I, I said on this thread, I said as much, and then I said, and now I'm just going to sit back and wait for NI, NRA trolls to tell me how I'm wrong or explain it away. Um, and sure enough, there was. And I'm pretty sure every time a mass shooting happens, the NRA either pay people <clears throat> to go out to any thread, you know, like just make sure that it's all covered and counter the narrative, you know, about gun control. And, uh, but you'll see even some people on the left say oh, there's no point in having gun control. And as I've said, if you don't have access, like if that young man and he had some problems, um, as all uh, anybody who, uh, you know, kills people obviously has problems and obviously there's a lot of anger and, uh, upset with everything and they uh, and they're usually young white men and that's the elephant in the room uh, the gender stereotypes what causes young you know white men to do this uh, you know you don't see women uh, doing this really at all mass murdering people like this and that's a discussion that's never had you know that we have obviously have dysfunctional stereotypes you know that we're promoting and that young men and young young boys are taking on. Um, yeah, the point is that I'm sure the NRA send out a whole bunch of people, even pay people like the Israeli government does with you know to keep uh, you know for the Hasbro to keep up the a good face for apartheid Israel, and the NRA does the same thing, I think with the gun thing because and, and everybody freaks out and starts buying up AK-15s or whatever as they've done recently. It's just so sad. I don't know what on earth is the matter with people that they are so attached to these weapons of destruction. I really don't. Anyway, um, that's a real US thing because it, you just don't have that here. And hopefully it will never come here. But anyway, you know, we haven't had a mass shooting since 1996, since that awful event. And um, that says something, and if, if people don't have access to weapons of mass violence, 
then the best they can do is, you know, sort of, I mean, if they can get a hold of a grenade, fine, but that's unlikely. Not, not as likely as getting a hold of these outrageous automatic weapons that nobody, nobody needs. Nobody needs these ridiculous weapons. I mean, I'm, a, I'm vegan, so of course I'm against hunting. I don't eat, wear or use animals, and I, I encourage, I do vegan education. You can check out my, um, this vlog and, and uh, see that I, every so often I do vegan live streams at Real Progressives. Um, I don't, uh, I think hunting is, uh, uh, is uh, totally unnecessary and people say I'm feeding my family but, uh, and you know, in some cases that might be so, but I mean, what are they living in a place where there's no other f food and uh, surely there's got to be some, you can grow something. But anyway, people say that, you know, I'm, they use all sorts of excuses, but really under, underneath it all, for most people, who are into hunting, it's a sort of an entertainment. And uh, weirdly enough, often people will say, I'm going to, um, you know, they basically enjoy the calm and loveliness of the forest. And instead of just doing that, um, they go there, enjoy that, but also kill sentient animals, you know? It's, it's sad that we can't sort of just enjoy the forest or whatever and enjoy the animals alive no we have to go there enjoy the calm and everything until we blast the hell out of some poor sentient animal who has no hope with these telescopic scopes that you can shoot animals from a, a, a mile away or whatever i mean it's absolutely it's sad and you know fishing fishing is the same i mean often i think people go fishing they want to sit in the beauty of um a uh, you know uh, sort of looking at the water in either in a boat or on a jetty and just enjoy the calm and they sit with their friend and they might have some drinks maybe and it's really about just communing with nature but instead of being they seem to people often men seem to need an excuse to be with one another whilst um, they're sitting in a nice area I don't know if they're afraid they're going to be labeled um, homosexual you know like gay or something I mean see this is the this is you know by just sitting with their male friend and enjoying the water they have to be killing some animal you know either killing fish and having suffocate on the jetty or going into a, a beautiful forest and and blasting the hell out of and who needs automatic weapons what are you going to mow down about or shoot them full of holes you know but you see what I mean by confused gender stereotypes and problematic ones you know if 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 men if we didn't have these dysfunctional male stereotypes men would feel quite comfortable about just going out and sitting in the quiet with their friends and not 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 worrying about what people think of that you don't have to have an excuse you don't have to an excuse of violence um, to be with your male friends and um, and you don't have to feel good about killing, you know, this whole thing of killing. Um, why? Why do we have to kill for entertainment? Uh, you know, and why do we have to feel like we're some kind of provider by killing? Killing innocent sentient animals who have no means of defense. And we don't, you know, most of us don't need to do that. You know, we, we've got access to uh, even in remote areas, people get drops from, um, you know, air, air drops of um, various, um, you know, foodstuffs, grains or whatever. So, you know, we don't need to, to do this. And we don't need animal products anyway to survive. We can easily meet our nutrition requirements from plants and other non-animal sources. So, you know, we don't need that. But anyway, I digress. I, I'm, I'm going off on a vegan uh, chat, but it's all relevant. You know, this is all relevant. Um, it's, it's all relevant to uh, this violence. And so I was watching Democracy Now!, which sometimes I watch. And um, there was a fellow on there who was a scholar from the Hemispheric Institute. His name was George Chicariello um, Mayer. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. And this is what he said. 
And this is um, in relation to gender stereotypes. And if you see the um, this this the video wiggling a bit, it's because one of um, our little friends, our feline friends, has come out, and she's rubbing her face <laughs> on the tripod. Of course, <laughs> you know how uh, little cats can be. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to hang on to it, and hopefully she won't knock it over. So anyway, he said, the shooter, who was apparently a white supremacist, and he was, um, he, I don't know if he had t ties to the Republic of Florida, which is a desperate little white supremacist group that's trying to get their name out there. I don't think he, I'm not sure if he was, but he certainly made extreme Islamophobic um, comments. He also, um, he also made comments that he feels that white people are superior to people of color. And um, he um, he had some problems. He had he was involved in domestic violence type things with uh, with women on the campus, um, I think. Or he was expelled from that school um, two years ago. But he's been uh, sort of very, in, to some degree, stalking, accused of stalking and other things, and uh, I think abusive towards uh, women, basically. And often misogyny goes hand in hand with white supremacy and also goes hand in hand, is very closely connected with mass shootings. Anyway, I'll just read this, what um, George uh, Ciccarella Meyer, the scholar from the Hemispheric Institute, said about the Florida shooting. This shooter, who is apparently a white supremacist, is also, is also and has also been violent toward women in his life. This is something that we have known. This is not a surprise these things go hand in hand because white supremacy and patriarchy are violent structures of power that, when frustrated, lead to violent conclusions. And yet, when we say this over and over again in the media, it's treated as if it's the first time anyone ever heard of it. And all the, of the data and all the information that we have out there has everything to tell us that it is actually accurate. The, that this is what was said after the Las Vegas after the Las Vegas shooting, when it came out that the shooter had been in public violently aggressive toward his own partner, and it happens repeatedly in cases like this, and it's really frustrating to to have a say to have to say over and over again that that this correlation exists that violence towards women, in this case, also violence towards animals. This sort of violent outlet of aggression across this person's life has something to do with feelings of dominance that are also expressed in what is apparently white supremacist ideology as well. This is the second, if this is true, about his white supremacist ties. This is the second alt-right, in quotes, school shooting in two months the last one in New Mexico by someone who was actively involved in the Daily Stormer, one of the most, excuse me, violent right-wing anti-Semitic websites on the far right. And this, this association is direct, and yet we had Trump eliminating almost all oversight of, you know, funding. And so we know that the government is, and sorry, funding, you know, scrutiny toward white supremacist groups. Even Obama had been cutting the funding. And so we know that the government is not, has no interest in prosecuting and undermining white supremacist organizations, and that organizations on the ground are going to need to do that themselves. And we need to, at the same time, we're told that these are just ideas in the great marketplace of ideas to be celebrated and discussed. But what we need to realize is that you don't discuss white supremacy. You don't debate it, you don't destroy it, you out-organize it. And that's something that we need to be doing on a much broader level. While we are trying to grapple with what's gone on in this instance, because we see people being radicalized. So, so that's a very interesting uh, quote uh, by this particular scholar. And, um, you know, it talks about the the close ties between misogyny and dom domestic violence and um, white supremacy. And of course, you know, you get all forms of discrimination with, with uh, one particular, you know, with this, form, like with white supremacy, the racism, you know, the sexism, misogyny, etc. It all goes hand in hand, usually. 
Anyway, um, and I often say where you have one form of discrimination, you'll have all forms. So, um, so that's really, um, but, but the interesting, the elephant in the room, as I say, is the fact that these are all young white men. You don't see women getting an AK-15, and they have access to them too, um, if they want to. You don't see them running around shooting up a, a school full of children, or you don't see them, uh, you know, taking their family out. Rarely do you ever see women killing their family. But on a regular basis, excuse me, on a regular basis you see uh, white men, often white, well, it's, it, it's, it's actually across the board, really, when it comes to domestic violence, but you often see men killing their whole family. They kill their wife or they, and they kill the children. Um, and you often see women being killed if they leave their husband or they leave their partner. Um, you know, that's a common thing. So now where does this originate, this sort of idea that it's okay, you know, if you're not getting your way, if you cannot dominate that, that, that individual, therefore you must kill them. Or if somebody does you, uh, if, if you feel like somebody has wronged you, like uh, this particular young man in, in Florida, I think he probably had some uh, an ax to grind with that school who expelled, that expelled him. And I don't know exactly why he was expelled, but I can guess, uh, probably because of his um, aggressive, he's probably had aggression towards female students or whatever. Um, but I mean, the signs were there on social media, of course, and the FBI was told that he was problematic and why, and that he had all, he had said nine months ago in, on a YouTube channel that he wanted to, he wanted to become a, a mass, a school mass murderer. Um, and, uh, you know, and he, you know, the pictures on his site, he was a, a just, you know, he had problems, you could, you can see. And I mean, what do you have to say? You know, he's, he's literally told people his intentions. And the FBI, he had an interesting uh, spelt name. Uh, I won't say what it was because I don't want to give him any notoriety, but he had a different spelling of his name, which was very unusual. So they could have found out who he was easily, the FBI, they chose not to. And that's another story of how the FBI, uh, you know, sort of uh, protect in some ways or do not have an interest in um, white supremacists and their threats towards the left or, um, you know, basically white supremacist groups. The government has actually defunded, as, you've, as he's mentioned there, Obama did it, defunded um, the FBI, defunded groups that, uh, government groups that were looking into that, and so is Trump, and so it's obvious that they are okay with these groups existing and probably even like the idea of them terrorizing, um, you know, le the left. Like, um, it's like a, a sort of a, a sort of a, a smaller version of what goes on in Colombia, really. You know, they have, you have paramilitary groups running around in Colombia that are sort of um, supported in some ways by government and also by corporations that go around killing teachers and priests and, um, union organizers and environmentalists and the like. It's almost like a version of that in a way, um, but just less uh, obvious. Um, but, but that's what's happening in the United States. It's not inching, it's galloping closer and closer to fascism. And who knows, um, in, a, in a, you know, sort of 2020, there may actually be a full-on, very overt white fascist supremacist, uh, you know, president of the United States. I'd say that um, Trump is um, definitely probably white supremacist, but he's not overt. There will be somebody who will see that it's obviously very easy. You just have to be a billionaire TV, TV host, reality TV host, and you can get in. And uh, you know, and there you can sort of um, say all sorts of uh, white supremacist stuff and racist stuff, and uh, that's fine. That's that's where they that's where they're heading. And this sort of thing, when you know, because of neoliberalism, 
since in the last 40 years or so, in the last 30 to 40 years. It's actually created sort of um, austerity for people. And often when that happens, just like the vi in, uh, you know, when Germany just before the war, just before Hitler took over, things were very, very tough for people. And that's when people unfortunately tend to turn on minority groups and blame them for um, their situation. Turn on gay, you know, LGBT people, turn on uh, minority groups and refugees, etc. Unfortunately, that's what seems to happen. And um, this government, the US government, of course, is, is encouraging that. And in Australia, the Australian government treats asylum seekers dreadfully. They don't look at the cause of asylum, or why these people are, are fleeing their homeland, and that's because Western countries, the US, led by the US empire, are going into their countries and bombing the bejesus out of them and taking their resources, killing them and, and destroying their country and their infrastructure, taking their resources, and then sending their co corporations in there to clean up and taking their oil. And that's, uh, you know, what US empire does with Western allies, and my government is a part of that. And uh, there's no discussion of that whatsoever. So we have white supremacist governments, really, and they are going into these countries with full of brown people and killing millions of brown people and taking their resources and trying to gain hegemony in the region. Um, so is it any wonder that we have, you know, young white supremacist, uh, you know, teenage boys who uh, don't seem to have any sort of identity and their identity then rests with this awful male stereotype of that you, you um, the way to be sort of um, a man and the way to be powerful is to dominate. Dominate women, dominate animals, dominate, um, you know, people that are uh, disenfranchised, vulnerable. And, you know, that's sort of the stereotype. And don't show emotion, suck it up, um, keep anger to yourself and it always comes out sideways. I mean, there's terrible violence in, in Latin America with, towards women. Femicide is a, a huge thing. I don't know what the hell's going on there, but I mean, there's like 10 or so women killed every day in Latin America in sort of femicides, you know, by partners, by their partners. Um, it might even be more than that. I don't know. It's, it's an outrageous number. Um, you know, and domestic violence and misogyny are rampant today, and rape is rampant in the world today. Misogyny and sexism is rampant, and you only have to look at social media to see how outrageous it is. I mean, it's sickening, really. And this scene is all, as acceptable because, um, you know, social media doesn't seem to think there's anything wrong with it. But they don't seem to think there's anything wrong with racist stuff either, or, tran you know, transphobic stuff or homophobic stuff, you know? Uh, and this is intentional. But heaven forbid that you should uh, interfere with some corporation and their profits in some way, you know, um, or, uh, you know, they, they're very protective of corporations and of, um, you know, political figures. And probably celebrities too, but celebrities always tend to prop up, you know, some particular party like the Democratic Party, which is hideous and part of the awful warmongering neoliberal ju um, duopoly. But anyway, the ne neoliberalism has certainly set the stage for um, a sort of creating terrible problems with families and with people in general and just, um, you know, trying to survive. Some people have three jobs in the United States, which is outrageous. And they're trying to turn Australia into that too. You know, they're trying to basically make it a sort of a neo-slavery, you know, a fe feudal system where corporations basically call the shots and you are just desperate for work and you'll work for any amount of money. And that's what neoliberalism is. It's where the marketplace decides what we're all going to do. Um, and, you know, where basically our governments are giving away our power to corporations. And that's why we have to crush neoliberalism because before it completely crushes us and it's on its way. Um, and if you've probably heard of George, um, um, 
Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon. His, a lot of his workers are on food stamps, and he has a hundred billion, billion with a B, um, dollars, and he, he made 2.6 billion or something dollars in one day. And his workers are on food stamps. You know, so, I mean, this is the state. You know, three people in the world own more than 90% um, of, I think, the planet's population. Three people own more wealth. So that's an insanity, and that's neoliberalism. So we have to crush that, and um, I've, I've, I'll post some links to MMT. I'm not going to get to, I'm not going to talk about MMT. I'm not really that qualified to talk about it anyway, but it's very important to crushing neoliberalism, and it's something everybody should understand because it's across the board in, uh, you know, whether in Australia, the United States, UK, um, you know, we need to understand this so that we can get what we're asking. We, we can um, sort of get the free health care that we, we deserve, free education and so forth. We need to start moving towards socialism. Um, I hope that Jeremy Corbyn gets in and something happens there. He doesn't really, probably doesn't know much about MMT. It's, the, it's just a description of how the economy works. Unfortunately, all the economic books are sort of, they're, all, they're still printing books that are like uh, talking about the economy uh, before it, it changed from the gold standard in 1971 to current, current day where countries, you know, like the countries are monetarily sovereign and, um, you know, we're not tied to a gold standard. So that's unfortunately what a lot of economic books talk about and a lot of people are still stuck in that mindset and a lot of politicians don't understand how the economy actually works now. So that's why it's important we understand it and then we can change the, the discourse and, and we can actually afford these things. We can actually afford free health care right now. And you don't have to raise taxes to do it. Anyway, so I'm not going to go into it any f further, but I hope that you look into that. You can go to neweconomicperspectives.org um, or you can go to Real Pro Progressives on Facebook. That's at Real Progressive, singular, on Facebook. And they talk about MMT all the time. That's modern monetary theory. And no, it's not a theory. It's just a description of how the economy works right now. And, um, and it's very important for all of us. So don't, uh, don't, don't have your eyes roll back in your head as if it's something that you won't be able to grasp because you will be able to grasp it. It's actually quite simple in some ways, really. Um, and you'll be It'd be like a gift to you. When you realize what's really happening, it'll be like somebody's given you a gift. Seriously. So please look into that. Um, it's very, very important. Anyway, um, so, so that's really all I wanted to say about, um, uh, you know, the gender stereotypes, the male gender stereotypes. We need to reinvent. I mean, throw away these gender stereotypes. Anyway, they're constructions. They're not real. You know, if you see little babies together, like male or female babies, <clears throat> they, they're they really much the same. They sort of, you know, they don't, they, if children were allowed to grow up without these enforced ideas of what a woman is supposed to be and how they're supposed to behave and what how men are supposed to be and how they're supposed to behave, and, you know, pink is for girls and blue is for boys, I mean, good Lord, <laughs> uh, you know, and all this sort of stuff. If, if, we, if we didn't enforce these ridiculous, you know, and, 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 and in the media does it too, you know, that, that young, young boys are not supposed to um, cry and they're not supposed to have lots of feelings and stuff. I mean, geez Louise, it's no wonder that so many men die early. They've got so much, they're so, so unsorted feelings and so unresearched a lot of men they have no idea what they're feeling and uh, you know and it all comes out sideways and it comes out sideways wh whether it's health you know with heart attacks and all sorts of things or whether it comes out in crazy anger and domestic violence and all sorts of things or comes out like this with mass shootings I mean that you know these things are just bursts of unbelievable anger and they have access to an automatic weapon and out they go and kill a bunch of people. Like I say, if they didn't have access to these weapons, 
I mean, the worst you could do is you could stab somebody or stab a couple of people before somebody would knock you down. Um, you know, and, and people keep saying, oh, it's not guns that kill, kill people. I'm sorry. Access to those sort of weapons, yes, it, it's going, you're going to be able to kill a lot of people. Um, and when, is, when is enough enough? For goodness sake, I, I honestly, such dysfunction in the U.S., it's tragic. I mean, I, I, I don't know how people, I don't know how people, you know, imagine having to be worried about sending your children to school just in case, and, and children having to do, you know, um, armed person on campus uh, drills, for God's sake, you know? Imagine that, having your children having to do armed campus, um, armed people on campus drills. And, and then having them have that trauma for the rest of their life. Those children are going to be having PTSD for God knows how long. They're going to be having to struggle with that for the rest of their lives. And some of them, you know, saw their friends killed. And for all the glorification of war, if you've ever, you know, often you'll hear people say, uh, the people that have actually been in wars, they, you know, if anybody tries to get them to talk about it, they usually say they don't want to, and it's nothing like you think it is, you know? Because, you know, violence like this is terrible, and we're not meant to be like this. And that's why you get soldiers coming back from war who've had to do these immoral things for oligarchs, and they end up killing themselves at 22 veterans a day, killing themselves. I don't know what the figure is now. You, you don't hear about it, but there was 22 veterans, U.S. veterans, killing themselves every day. And we've, uh, in Australia, had about uh, 250 or 300 um, people coming back from the Middle East and wars who have killed themselves. You know, it's sort of, violence is not really our nature really it isn't i think we have um we have gone in that direction but really you know um children most children are sort of like they don't want to uh they don't really want to harm animals really they don't they learn to do stuff like that you know they don't want to they, they you know and uh, we don't, and we don't sort of stop children from. We might stop them from harming animals when, when they're younger, but later on, here we are with them on our plates and wearing them on our backs and encouraging children to, you know, to fish and to hunt and all that sort of thing. That's an American thing, the hunting. I, I don't. I, it's just not something that we really are into really here. Um, guns. I mean, you'd, it'd be shocking if somebody said they had a gun. People would go, why? You know, maybe some people on farms might have them, but, um, you know, most people just don't have them and don't want them. Thank goodness, I say. And I hope we never ever, uh, I'm sure there'd be um, lots of different uh, right-wing groups that would love Australia to go the way of the US so they can sell the guns and whatever, or it doesn't even have to be a right-wing group whoever, whatever politician is bought by corporations would probably love, you know, for us to go that way. That's just another thing they can sell, uh, another lobbyist that can give them money for something. But anyway, Australia fortunately hasn't gone that direction. And we haven't had any mass shootings since 1996. So that's something to remember, you know. Yes, um, you know, neoliberalism has created a dreadful situation for us all and people are under terrible stress and and piled on debt and everything but you know the thing to also remember is that you don't if you don't have access to these weapons of mass destruction then it's unlikely you're going to kill a bunch of people and and to um you know if, if uh if you um i've lost my train of thought again i must be tired um so uh, if you um you know if you if you don't have access to the weapons you're not going to kill a bunch of people and also, um, if we don't have these problematic stereotypes that are constructions that help actually feed the wars, you know, if you, keep, if you keep promoting the male stereotype, you'll always have cannon fodder. And that's also something to consider, that governments like these male stereotypes 
of the the pro-violence and and all of that misogyny and the whole thing because it actually feeds into they just cannon fodder these soldiers for their oligarchic wars in other countries their white supremacist wars of and taking resources and hegemony so these male stereotypes suit um governments you know so um there was a second point i was going to make but i've forgotten it Anyway, I suppose it's basically the, the male stereotypes are um, a great thing for governments, you know. So that's why also we need to look at that because, you know, as like I say, the elephant in the room is, does anybody ever ask the question, how come it's always men that go out and do this sort of thing, how they kill their families or they kill people they don't know in schools or whatever. You don't see women, even in when they have PMS, you know, when they have you know, and hormones can be really crazy then for PMS. You don't see women grabbing automatic weapons and going in and shooting up places. So why is that? And why is it acceptable that we keep allowing and not addressing and not challenging and not sort of saying, this is a real problem, these male stereotype, gender stereotypes that are reinforced constantly and, and rebel against it because that's sort of a, a real thing that we're going to have to look at. And we're going to have to get rid of these ridiculous gender stereotypes and just let people be how they are. Allow gender diversity, for goodness sake. We, we create our own prisons and we, it's abusive for men to put them in these gender prisons. It's abusive towards them. It's abusive to children. It's abusive to uh, female children too, to put them in these gender prisons that still seem to be going on for all the, you know, that women have come uh, a, a long way. But no, they really haven't in many ways. In some ways they have, yes, but in other ways, no. I don't see it, you know, and I've been around for a few decades and I don't see it. In fact, and the misogyny is outrageous on social media, just outrageous and sickening. If I didn't have to, you know, if I wasn't doing these live streams or whatever uh, and uh, vlogs on you know and 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 that social media for me living in a rural area that i get more exposure when i go online than i would if i was just going down the street and talking in a park or something or a stall you know if it weren't for the fact that i do get extra exposure online i'd just drop social media straight away because it's just sickening it's sickening the censorship the censorship by Google and Facebook, fascist book, um, you know, Twitter, the, the anti-Russian propaganda, the, just the, the censorship is outrageous now. The algorithms on Facebook are crazy. They're just outrageous. I mean, I started a page uh, about a year or so ago. If I'd started it, say, eight years ago, it probably would have had, you know, uh, a few thousand people on there. But instead, I have like, I don't know, 140, and it's just stayed at that, 140. I had another page that I started in 2000, halfway through 2009 or somewhat, something. It had, it got up to 58,000 uh, uh, in two, by 2012, and then came to a screeching halt. You know, algorithms are just awful. And uh, it's so depressing. I find it really depressing that, particularly for left, left people, left leaning, I'm not talking about Democrats now, I'm talking about real left, is very, very difficult to get, to disseminate information and get past this, this censorship. You know, this is sort of totalitarianism really, you know? I mean, I don't know when it's, I don't know how far it's gonna go, but I think at some point, and I've said this before, the internet's going to be almost unusable. It's, 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 it's almost unusable at this point, it's, you know? Uh, the whole idea of net neutrality and stuff, it's like, I mean, it's almost unusable now. Anyway, you just have to keep on plodding on, hey, just keep on trying to get the message out in any way one can and uh, promote nonviolence and justice and stick up for our brothers and sisters in, um, you know, Western Asia and stick up for the Palestinians and also go vegan. That's very important. It's a first step to a nonviolent life. Anyway, so 
Um, I think that's probably all I'll, I'll say at the moment. Uh, it's about 45 minutes now. I probably should, sometimes I ramble, so I'm sorry. I tend to meander and uh, uh, on a subject and um, I don't exactly know sometimes where it's going to go. I don't really think about these things too much before I sit down. So anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. My name's Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.